let's get uh, going here. Let's make sure that we have everything that we need for our dotting techniques. Yesterday we did our lines. Today we are going to do designs or shapes with our techniques. So yesterday we talked about the line of uh, uh, dots and the line of ascending or diminishing dots. We talked a little bit about our tools and we learned the technique of the perpendicular dot where you have to have your dotting tool that you go down to pick up perpendicular and you go down to drop off perpendicular. Let's confirm that we have everything that we need on our tabletop for tomorrow. You're going to have your dotting, uh, uh, your two dotting designs off of Pinterest on your two nails. If we have time today, you can get started today. We'll see. You have your napkin. Today we're working on our mat. You have your acetone. If you run out, there's more back there. You have your dotting tools, the three sets. Well, the clear one's not a set. And then you have your one of your pens. You do have some lint-free wipes. If you run out and need more, they're back there. And you can either use the polishes you took from yesterday, or you can use your paints. I'm going to use paints, but it's totally up to you what you um, decide to do. So, let's go ahead and see how far we can get with this class. So, the first thing that we always want to do whenever you buy a new tool or new products is see what can it do for me, how far can I push it, and what, what does it do. So, I'm going to use my black paint. You can use whichever, your polish or your paints. You can drop off a little bit of polish in one of these circles and you can work off of the circle. If you want to use your polish, if you want to use paint, then you can work out of your paint. Remember that paint dries with the air. So you can pour some paint out into the circle and close your container, totally up to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna work with our wooden dotting tools. Let's go ahead and take it with the biggest dotter that you have and then put it in order of size, biggest to smallest. So we're gonna start with the biggest dotting tool. We're gonna pick up a little bit of product. Now remember that you always wanna make sure that you have no more than half of the bead covered in product. The more product you have, the bigger your shape is gonna be. We're gonna do two lines here on this first square. You're gonna perpendicularly drop off and pick up. That is the size of the dot. I'm gonna take my wipe and I'm gonna clean my daughter. That tool there gives me that size dot. Then I'm gonna take my next dotting tool, the next size, I'm gonna dip it into my product and I'm gonna drop down the dot and wipe. Really get your nail in there between the dot or the ball or bead and the stem to really clean that up. And then the last size, I'm gonna drop down to pick up product. And then I'm gonna drop down to drop off product. And the bead should be substantially smaller. Well, not substantially, barely smaller to be honest. But it should, you should clearly see that it's smaller. Now, if your third bead is about the same size or bigger or identical to the second bead or dot, you picked up too much product. So, can I use my smallest bead and create the middle size bead? I can. Okay, I really, I can, you really can. You just do that by picking up a lot of product. Okay, so those are the three sizes that those three tools will give me. Now, just FYI, they do sell dotting tools that are bigger than this dotter that give you bigger dots. We just, you just don't have them in your kit, okay? I'm gonna take these tools in the same order and I'm gonna flip them around like so. All I'm doing is I'm flipping them around like this, okay? So, in the same order, I'm going to pick up that first one, I'm going to pick up product, and I'm going to underneath drop off the bead, wipe off, 
that's my first tool. My second tool, it literally is the same size, except for this is an angled design. So instead of picking, holding my tool perpendicular, sometimes like when you're doing toes and they're like the, the angle of the foot, you can hold this like a pencil and you can angle it, but the bead still drops down perpendicular to the table or the surface and you still pick up and drop off perpendicular. You're just holding the tool at a different angle, okay? And then you wipe that off and you take your last tool and you pick up drop off, okay? So those are the sizes that I can get with this set of tools. I'm going to then take my black silicone brushes. I'm going to put them in order from largest to smallest. The two middle ones kind of almost blend in, but they are slightly different in size. And then in the middle rectangle here, I'm going to drop off a line of dots that show how big or how small the dots are. Take a product, drop off product. And it will go from large to small. If your dots look identical or the same, you have picked up too much product with your tool. You should have four different size of dots. Barely be able to tell, but it should be four different sizes. So I'm going to place my tools in that order on my mat. That Those size dots are what these tools give me. Then I'm going to take my clear daughter. I'm going to pick up and in this last square, I'm going to drop off there. Drop that there. Then I'm going to take my needle nose pen. I'm going to pop the back end to pop out the straw. Then I'm going to pump one, two, three to get my needle out far enough away from the straw that I don't get polished in the straw. Now, if I dip my needle all the way in, one, my needle is all going to get dirty. Not good. Two, but I'm going to get the whole needle dirty so then the product is going to drip and it's going to create a big bead at the bottom. I don't want that. I want to barely dip my needle into my product so that here when I drop off my dot, look, it's super teeny. You can barely see it on the screen. It's super teeny tiny. Then very carefully without hurting myself, I want to clean my tool before I push it back carefully into my pen. Okay, and that, those are the sizes that I can create or, or make happen with these tools. Now, question, can I make a bigger dot with my dotting tool? Yes, let's take the biggest dotting tool we have, which is the wooden one. We're going to pick up product, a big good chunk of product. Like, like can you see that? It even has like a little point at the end because I picked up so much product. I'm going to drop down perpendicular. That's my dot it makes, but I'm going to swirl it to spread it. I'm going to turn my, I'm going to move my, my tool out of the way, but you should be perpendicular. But this is what you do. You swirl it and swirl and swirl and swirl and look how big your circle can get. You can go as far as you are able to get a really nice good circle. Can you create a bigger circle? Yes, you can. You can even do that with the smallest of the daughters. It's probably easier to create a circle with the dotting tool than it is with a brush. Some people would agree with that and some artists would not agree with that. The only thing with that type of technique is that you have to be consistent and you have to be really good on your edges. Questions on how to get to learn your tools. 
All right, so we are now going to learn how to create, and y'all, when you're when this little thing gets about done, toss it, get you a new one. Okay, they're, they're not that expensive. Because then you're, it starts to get mush, it's just, just get a new one, okay. I'm gonna use my napkin though, because I'm using paint. All right, they do sell, like sometimes to put them in order like this, you can keep your, your tools on the tabletop. Sometimes a little bit harder, so um, they sell these, these are for markers, but they sell these things where you could put your brushes or your tools down in a certain order or just stand them up and they don't touch the surface of the table so they stay clean, but you can um, just place your tools and it holds your tools for you like so. Okay, so that if you ever see one, you can add that to your kit. All right, we are going to begin with these designs. I'm going to be working on the um, mat. We're going to be working on the mat. I'm going to use the coffin nails. And we're going to start with our red. If I'm going to use red, you can use whatever color you want. If I'm right-handed, my supplies are on my right-hand side. If I'm left-handed, my supplies are on my left-hand side. Always. Okay, always, you don't cross your body to get your stuff. You always go on the, the side your hand's working on. So if we're going to start off with one of the most common, most popular dotting designs. But you are going to, to, to well, let me say it is one of the most easiest designs, but it's most easiest to get wrong because people don't know how to do it. They don't know the technique behind it, the theory of the technique behind it. This is our Mickey Mouse. <clears throat> Super basic. Three dots. That's it. Here's where people do it wrong. Or here's some ways. They don't pick the right size tool and they only use one tool. So, obviously we're going to make the head of I, the Mickey Mouse because right Mickey Mouse has a bow. But Mickey Mouse, this is a sweater nail technique. But we're just going to, we're not going to do the lines and the powder. We're just going to do the Mickey Mouse down the middle. We're going to do it on this, on this coffin nail. We're going to use our biggest dotting tool for the body, which, for the head. Okay? The biggest. So this is this size right here. Let's take a look at the picture. Look at the ears. Is the head and the ears the same size? No. When you look at Mickey Mouse, the anatomy of his head... The size of his ears are not the same as the size of his head. Imagine how that'd be three circles together. That that's not his anatomy. So what people do, how people make the mistake, is they use one size dot dotting tool to make the head and the ears. That is incorrect. If I take a look, if we take a look at the ears here, you can probably fit four or more of these dots of the ears in the portion of the head. So you need to come over here and you need to decide, determine which of the daughters can be the ears because you can fit about four more in the head shape. So you, your biggest daughter is going to be the body and pick your next size, whichever size you deem appropriate for the ears. So you should have two different daughters to create the Mickey Mouse. Here's the other way people do it wrong whenever they're doing, well, let's, let's do the body first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do this wrong again and see if you guys can catch what is going wrong. But let's do this together. Pick up perpendicular, pick up your product, and drop down the head. You're going to do four. See if I can do this again. Okay, what's wrong on mine? It's slanted. Okay, if you take a look at me, what am I doing wrong? If you look at my body, I'm I'm to the side. I'm slanted. My weight is on my left rear end cheek okay my uh, from where I'm sitting it literally looks like a straight line 
but when I straighten up and I get square, my shoulders are square with my rear end cheeks and I'm here, my nose, when I look at the corner, the tip of my nose, the nail is right underneath that vi visual point, I can clearly see it's crooked. I mean, the line is straight, it's just going, it's tilting over the other direction. When you're working with your clients, the nail should be, when you look at the tip of your nose, the nail should be in that same visual direction, at that same point, so that you can have symmetry, okay? So, I'm gonna leave it, I'm not gonna erase it. After you do your four points, wipe your tool, and then you're gonna pick up your next tool and you're gonna do your ears. You're gonna pick up, drop off, pick up, drop off. Now, here's another, as you're doing this, it just lend me an ear. No pun intended in that, I swear. Okay, so as you're doing the Mickey Mouse, the ears, this is where people get it wrong. They space it out wrong. How? They either put the ears, I'm gonna try to do it here. They put the ears too far apart or too close together. So as I'm going down the Mickey Mouse, you can see that the first one is good. And then you can see this one doesn't even, I don't even know what that looks like, right? Now, that's why, how and why people get it wrong. Let me tell you why, the, the, the theory behind that technique. I want you to look at a clock. Okay, imagine this dot is a clock or there's a clock over there underneath the, the flag. There are numbers from 12 to 3 to 6 to 9 to 12 around the clock. If you look at this picture and this Mickey Mouse right here, imagine this body, the head, is a clock and there are numbers in between inside that, that circle. The ears are proportional, meaning they're one on one side, one on the other, same size, they're symmetrical. If there's a clock right here and the ears are there, what number does the ear sit on on both sides? What number is it? If there's a clock right here, one and 11, and 11? okay. Between 11 and 10 and 11, between 1 and 2? Definitely not like here. Here is more like between 9, 10, and 2 and 3. That's not where his ears go, anatomy, uh, anatomically speaking, right? So, when you look at a design, you have to, it's, there's geometry, there's some math to this, right? You've got to look, where is the placement? And then how can I help myself find where that placement is? What, what can I relate this to? Well, I have a clock. And if I put the ear at the 10 o'clock on one side, I need to put it at the two o'clock. And because it's a circle and it's got symmetrical uh, elements there, I can, I can line it out and it's gonna come out perfect. So those are the ways that people get this wrong. Although it is the most basic design, that is how. They're not using the right tools. They're only using one size tool. And there's no balance that they're putting in the wrong spot. Okay? If you in your life have never seen Mickey Mouse, you don't know he, that he has ears, right? So then you're not going to know where his, are they on the front of the head, on the back of the head, on the side? You got to know the character. You got to study the character. And so that you know, does SpongeBob have one tooth or two? Yeah, I don't watch SpongeBob. I don't know. He has teeth. He's a sponge, right? You gotta study the character so you know how to draw it out. Okay, we're not gonna do the lines. We're not gonna do the powder. But that—that's just. I just want to teach you the technique behind this, the theory behind that particular technique. So let's move on to a daisy flower. I'm gonna close my paint here. I'm talking too much. It's drying out on me. Remember, remember, you should always pour out paint so that it doesn't dry out on you, but uh, I'm not going to do that, but you should always do that. I'm going to use blue and yellow to prove a point that I want to teach you. All right, so I've got my, my blue and I've got my yellow. Okay, we're going to do this little daisy technique. It's the most common flower, one of the most common flowers, 
very easy. It's just five dots in a circle formation with the dot in the middle and you're done. I want you to pick two sizes, whatever two sizes you want. So that we can make this flower and I'm going to also teach you about polka dots and patterns. So, people do this, it's easy, they do it on their toes a lot, the five flower design. There's different uh, ways to do the petals and fancy and corner and points, we're just going to keep it basic. People mess up this flower and I'm going to teach you the theory behind the techniques on how not to mess it up. Okay, so you have five, five dots. You don't just put the dots down. There is a particular way and a particular spot that the dots go. So, think of a star. A star has a point on the top, on the two sides, and on the two bottom corners. Yeah? Okay. If you do it this way, I promise your, your flowers will, your five petal flowers will always be perfect. I'm going to pick a blue. I'm going to drop down a bead at the point of the star, at the top of the middle. So I'm, gonna, I'm only going to do one, one flower, okay? We're going to do one dot in the middle, in the top, that top point of the star. Then I'm going to pick up again. Now I'm going to do my two side points of my, my stars. They're, they're next to each other. Now, when I put my dots down, I want my dots to touch on the edge, okay? So I'm gonna go here, pick up, drop off, and I'm gonna go here, okay? There's one on the top, and then two dots both on the side. I'm gonna go ahead, and now I wanna do the two bottom corners of my stars. My circles though are, my, my round dots are still touching on the edge. So then here we go, one, and here we go, two. Now again, I'm not right, my nose is not lined up with my nail, so if you're not lined up right, you can't see if you've got that symmetry. But here are my points, right? Imagine as you're drawing the star, you're gonna go start from the bottom corner, you go up, down, left, right, down. Can you see those points of the star? Okay, it is super important to make sure, if you want your flower to come out perfect every time, that you place the petals in that manner. It's almost like a little teddy bear. The head, the two arms, and the two legs, okay? Now, can you do it the other way? Yes, you can, but when you're starting out, start, start this way, and then you can evolve with your techniques as time goes by. Now, super important to make sure that the circles, the dots, they all barely touch on the side. Then you can take a smaller, bigger, same size bead, it's up to you, and you're gonna pick up your second color. I'm gonna use yellow for the middle and I'm gonna see if I can, see if it'll do it. If not, I'm just gonna talk to you about it. So I'm gonna pick up some yellow, which is a lighter color than my blue petals. I can't use white because you wouldn't be able to see it on the on the mat. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna put yellow down, and I'm gonna pick it up. So my yellow is lighter than my blue, and it didn't do it, it didn't blend. Yellow and blue make what color? Green. So if I don't do this carefully, I'm gonna have green in here. But if my client didn't ask for green, I'm in trouble. So when you're using polish, you might want to wait for that first layer to dry. If you're using paints, definitely wait for it to dry because the you know, paints mix more. And if you're using gel, you might want to cure that blue layer first and then put the yellow on top. That way you don't blend your colors together. Now let's talk about polka dots. Take the other tool, the smaller uh, bead uh, tool selection that you have, you need, you need one of these, <laughs> smaller selection that you have, okay, actually put two polishes like this and then put your tools in the middle and they won't roll off, there you go, alright, so take the smaller tool of your, of your choice and now we're going to do polka dots, now this particular design, it has two daisy petals, they're not one on top of the other, they're kind of diagonal a little bit. 
Do you remember last year when I taught you henna? And I taught you about you need to finish the pattern even though you don't have enough space to finish it. Just draw the little corner or the little line. That is this. Here you can see she drew, or here, whoever, drew a little day like a part of the daisy flower here on the corner edge. It makes it look more like a pattern. Imagine if they didn't have that there, and then it's just two flowers on the, it's not a pattern, it's just two flowers on the nail. So you always have to make sure to keep that in mind with nail designs as well. You gotta finish the pattern, if that's what you're going for. So here, polka dots, they just added polka dots. It's not a line of diminishing or ascending the dots. It's just pick up, drop off, pick up, drop off. They're just scattered. Here, we're going to, if you're able to, we're going to make it symmetrical. There's a geometrical, you know, pattern to this. So we're going to pick up our blue, or whatever color you're using, and we're going to drop off a dot, then pick up, and underneath that, drop off a dot, and then pick up, and underneath that, drop off another dot. And then we're going to drop off dots on the side, in between. And we gotta finish our design, even if it's at the corner edge of our nail. And you gotta make sure to have some balance and some, oop, I picked up too much. Some balance and some symmetry. Oh, did it pick up enough? Okay, you gotta make sure if you are doing a pattern that you're consistent. If you're just filling in space, you do not have to be consistent. So if I were to slice this, this nail down the middle, it has symmetry on both the right and the left side. Okay? That's the difference between filling in a space and or just li literally like creating a particular geometrical design. Okay? It's, a li it's just a line of dots, but in the configuration, it's not a line. So you pick up, drop off, pick up, drop off. All right, let's do the heart next. Now, super important to understand that whenever you're doing a design like this, there's two ways. You can get a stencil. Do you remember la uh, last year when we did a face painting and we did the little stencil stickers? You put the stencil on the skin and you paint the paint in and you peel the sticker and then, you know, you get the shape. You can, they do sell nail stencils. You can buy those in the shape of a heart, put it down and then peel it out. You can do that. But we're going to freehand this. Whenever you're doing a design like this, you have to make sure to do the darker color first and then the lighter color. So I'm going to use gold, teal, and blue for this particular design. I'm going to take three different size dotting tools to create this design. Let's see. I'm going to start with the red, which is a darker color. So I'm going to do my blue. I'm going to pick up blue, pick up, drop off, pick up, drop off. And I'm going to do it in the shape of a heart. Okay. I can then do a line of 930 ADA attendance reminder. A line of ascending or diminishing dots to make smaller I'm using blue, smaller blue color uh, uh, dots. I'm going to then take my next tool with my next color and I'm going to continue to fill in the shape of my heart by picking up, dropping off and then a line of diminishing dots to create my heart. And then my last color, my gold, which you're gonna, it's gonna be hard to see on the screen. You'll be able to see yours. I'm gonna fill in the rest of the shape of the heart to complete the heart shape with that color. Now I can overlap but if I'm overlapping, if I started with my gold and I overlap on top of the gold with my blue, you're not going to be able to see my gold uh, anymore because the blue covers it. 
So you got to make sure that when you're doing this, you use the colors in the right order. I know it's a little bit hard to see there, but the nail here is a little bit more uh, narrow. The nail here is a little bit more wider, like the square. So you have a little bit more uh, space on those shapes. Is anyone going to reboot? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the frog, okay? So, super, super important. Another thing to understand is that if you have cheap product, the color does not work well. So, the vibrancy of the color is going to be dull. You may need to do two layers instead of one. Okay. So, then we'll stop here. None of the classes got to the frog, so that'll be good for tomorrow. All right, so you've got to make sure that you get good quality products. If you don't have good quality products, then it doesn't work. If I had white, you can see it, but if I had black and I put yellow on top of the black, you need like two coats, right? Because the black is going to show through. But if you have really good product that has a really thick, deep color and it's nice and vibrant, you just need one coat. That's the difference between cheap products and uh, expensive products, the professional kind, is that the quality of the product is much better in that, that sense, okay? So if you will, just go ahead and make sure to take some acetone and wipe down your tools, and then take your napkin with some acetone and go ahead and wipe down your um, mat. All of that will come right off. Tomorrow we will finish with our frog and then we will um, uh, continue our designs with uh, choosing from Pinterest two designs and doing them on our nail tips. If you need a different particular colors for tomorrow, you are able to uh, grab those from the nail rack by the reception counter. You can trade out your colors or keep the same. Totally up to you for tomorrow. And your table setup is the same. Does anyone have any questions? Fabulous. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just clean off this part right here. Your acetone does not mess up your mat. It may um, kind of uh, kind of make it bulge out a little bit, but if you just give it some time, it'll settle down. It does not stay that way. All right. If you have no more questions, then you're welcome to put away. If you want to work on any of your techniques, you're more than welcome to. If you need anything, please let me know. And the time is yours to do what you need during reboot.